So we rehearse so much on music. We are what's called a marketplace church. There's, it's kind of a phenomenon that happened 20 years ago. People started talking about having marketplace churches. In other words, taking the church out of its out of its building and, and moving it out into the marketplace. And we literally came to the marketplace, didn't we? Just right here. But a marketplace church meets needs that uh, the traditional church uh, will, will sometimes miss. And uh, we, we have a, a formula here at our church that's, that's simple. It emphasizes lightheartedness, genuine fellowship, heart-touching music, and Bible-based preaching. That's what we do here. It kind of, people tell us when they come to the Cowboy Church, it sort of reminds them of the churches of, the, of days gone by. Churches that, uh, when, like when kids, when we used to be young and kids, we go to those country churches and sort of, we kind of remind folks of that. And for that, we're so glad. Uh, uh, I believe the Cowboy Church is is doing what God put it here to do. I don't think we're perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I think that, but I feel like that we are accomplishing our mission, and I'm I'm thankful to you and to the Lord for letting us do this thing here and, and uh, be a part of it. Uh, but what is the purpose of a church? Now, that's we're going to have to get back to that. What is the reason that God established the church on planet Earth? What does it do? What is its function? What's its purpose? And uh, you see, the church, what is the church? <coughs> First of all, the church is just where the believers are gathered or scattered. You see, we're, when we're gathered, we are, we're called the assembly of the believers. When we're scattered, we're still the church. You understand? We're not, we're not the church just because we come together. You're the church every other day of the week, as, or as you're here at church in this building, we're all the same. Whether scattered or, on, or together, we have a mission from heaven. Now, every church has a different focus. There's a reason for each church, and they will. Some will focus on one thing, missions, one or, or worship, or discipleship. or something. They'll focus on one thing or another. But we all share the same mission on earth, and that is to be the body of Christ on planet earth today. We are Christ. We're the, we're the hands of Christ. We're the feet of Christ. We're the, we're the mouth. We are, we are here today to represent Jesus Christ. We have come through our, and probably are entering into a time when there is a strain on the quality of, of Christianity. On the quality of how we follow the Lord. We, we, uh, let me show you what I mean by that. I have people ask me from time to time, and I think they're all these, they're very serious when they ask me this. They'll say, what is the minimums of Christianity? What are the least things you can do and still be called a Christian? And words, what is, you know, do, what do you have, what do you, what is the, what can, in other words, what can I get rid of? You know, or I don't want to have to do very much to be a Christian, but what's the very minimum? So what's the least I can do? Uh, and then I have people say, well, what's the minimum expression of church? What, what is that like when you, what is the least you can do and still be a church? And it kind of got me thinking about what the real purpose of the church is. And so I want to ask you to follow me to Ephesians this evening. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to look at at what church is and what church does. Now while you're turning there, let me tell you that the New Testament has five major areas for a new church. Worship, get this, note this now, worship, fellowship, discipleship, uh, ministry, caring for each other, and evangelism. Those are the, the, the things that the Bible defines and talks about. That's what we do. The minimal church has all of those. You can't take one of those out. You can't take out evangelism. You can't take out fellowship. You can't take out discipleship, ministry, or evangelism. They all have to go. If you take one of them out, you, you no longer are a church or something else. Now, uh, you, you know, some people think of a church as a country club. And you get it, you know, you, we just take the very bit. No, we're not a country club. We, we, don't, we don't pick who we want to be here. We don't kick folks out. This is a whosoever will may come. But you have to understand, you've got to do these things. This is, this is a part of, of the church. Now, uh, 
some people are like, they like, you know, let's go, let's go buy a car. Let's look at a, we're going to buy a brand new car. And they say, okay, we're going to sell you this car. Now, do you want the motor? Well, yeah. Do you want the transmission? Yeah. Wheels, steering wheel, brakes. Yeah. Yeah, we want all of that, you know. You can't leave off one of those things and still have a car that works, right? Well, it's that way with church. You have to have it all. Now, the Apostle Paul is writing to this church in Ephesus, and, and he's writing on the subject of the church. So as we look into the third chapter of Ephesians today, I want to, for us to think about and, and listen to what he says to this church about why we're here, what we do, and what is our purpose. So tonight we're going to try to ask the question or look at or deal with the question of what is the cowboy church and are we reaching our purpose and our mission do we have these things at work here and uh, are we a church uh, some people say have actually said to me well you're not a real church are you with there at the, at the stockyards and i'm thinking well again i don't know what a real church is but we have these five things going for us so yeah we're a real church we don't have Sunday school. Well, yeah, but we're a real church. Well, we don't have mission union, missionary group. Well, no, but we're a real church. We're doing the work of missions. We're doing the work of a Sunday school of discipleship. And, and all of it, we are a real church. So let me see. Let, let's look through Ephesians here and see if we can find some things that would talk about the purpose of this church and to see whether we are or not. Now, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, it says this, these words, His intent was that now through the church... The manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. So one of the real reasons of a church is to reveal the wisdom of God. To let everybody know, evangelism, to let everybody know that there is a God. That, there, that Jesus is God incarnate. And He came to earth, died on a cross, rose again. So that you and I might have a hope of salvation and resurrection. So there is a, a God. See, knowing God in Christ is true wisdom. Now the church, our job as a church, is to reveal to the whole world that Jesus it has come, that Jesus is here, and that He's coming back again. One of the best ways that we do evangelism in our church is by our sweet fellowship. <laughs> it's hard to imagine isn't it. That fellowship can be evangelism, and it can. We've been in, you and I have all been in places where the fellowship in the church was so soured and, and so uh, cold that nobody wanted to be a part of it, you know. He said, why would I want to go there? I mean, you could ice skate up and down the halls. <laughs> Everybody in the congregation wore robes, you know. <laughs> it felt like that. But no, we've been to those churches. But, but this is when we can see the fellowship of, of, of the people and and see how that works. That's wonderful. So, so whenever we who are the church reveal Christ through our fellowship, our love, our singing, whatever, we're doing ministry, we're doing evangelism for the glory of God. So you say, well, how did the Cowboy Church, how do you guys do evangelism? Well, let me talk about some things that we used to consider evangelism. And first of all, revivals. Uh, I have come to you from the world of revivalism. I was an evangelist. I traveled around the country and, and uh, led revivals for many, many years. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't know how many, 250 some odd different churches that I was in in those years and, and to do revivals. But we no longer do those series of meetings, especially here at the Cowboy Church. Why is that? Well, first of all, we can't get the building that often to have a revival meeting, a series of meetings. And you know what I've noticed that after a while, in our modern, fast-paced world, people are more tired after revival. They're deader than they were when it started. <laughs> You're supposed to revive them, and, and after you drag them to church for seven or eight days in a row, they're dead anyway. So <laughs> revive, I don't know. It didn't, just didn't work out. I don't know. Now, we also, culture has changed so radically. <clears throat> when I was young and training for the ministry, I, I had people would come into our churches explain to us how to get us get our Bible. You know, we all had our King James Bibles, you know, but the bigger one you could get, the better, you know. You put that on your arm and you'd go door to door knocking on the door and tell people he's going to hell. <laughs> Boy, that's the way to win people the Lord. I mean, just... Uh, 
you you done no good sinner, you're gonna die and go to hell. Well, you, what would happen today if you if you went up and down the community and, and did try something like that? Well, after you got out of jail, or, or well, if that ever worked, then it does, I know that it doesn't work anymore in, in this day. Uh, just because of culture has changed so much. So here is the Soccer River Cowboy Church plan of evangelism. If we need a plan, if somebody says, do you guys have a plan? Yeah, here's our plan. Each of us tells everybody we can about Jesus. How's that work? Everybody tell everybody about Jesus. Each of us to, you know, I, I told you often that, that the best definition I ever heard of evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. That's the best form of evangelism I've ever heard. That to me defines it so clearly. Is is we are whenever we we have found something that makes a difference and we tell everybody else because it mattered to us. A beggar who needs bread, when he finds bread he tells another beggar where to find bread. That's evangelism in that world and in our world, that's what we do here. We we change lives one person at a time. Each one of us changing others. Now, so we have that plan. We show uh, uh, Christ. Uh, we tell Christ. Uh, tell others about Jesus. And we also live it because we try to back up our words with our life. Amen? That's important that you do that. See, if you're living one way and you've got a quick cussing to tell somebody about Jesus, you know, you, you, you kind of at cross patches there. I, I, somebody said, what, what about the cowboy church? What do you do? I said, look, I think I've been a success if I can get them to tell somebody about Jesus without cussing, I think I've done a pretty good job <laughs> with a bunch of cowboys. But the truth is, you've got to live your life out before others as much as as, uh, as talk about it. So Bill Bridges, our church focus here is on Christ. That's He's on Jesus. It's on Jesus. We believe that if He is lifted up, He will draw men to Himself. And so we, in our songs, uh, even in our cutting up and in our joking, it's always one way focused. We always are interested in Christ and thinking about Him. So we lift Jesus as high as we can and He draws folks to Him. Now the next thing we do is, is discipleship. We teach people about Jesus. Um, let, let's read uh, chapter 3 verse 12. In Him and through faith in Him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Folks, I don't know if you've got this. It is so simple. Church... And the Christian faith is all about faith. It's all about faith. It, that is our purpose. That's our, that's our rationale. That's how we make it work. And this faith is for everyone. Uh, and uh, there's nobody left out. Uh, listen, a church that gives the impression that you are, we are the chosen few and, and not just, you know, you can't, everybody, just not everybody can come in here. You've got to be this way. You've got to have this much money. you got to have this much education. you got to, listen, I, I, again, that's not a church. A church has to be level at the foot of the cross. It has to have complete access, free access to the whole, the whole world and that has to be able to come to the church. Again, if a church is not, it's not a church, then it must be something like a country club. We come to God through Jesus. That's our way. That's how we believe it here. Now, you know our world is trying to figure out how to get to God without Jesus. Oh, they love it, you know. Well, maybe you can go through Muhammad. Or maybe you can go through Buddha. Or maybe you can go to God just by... Through, go through Oprah. I don't know, you know. Or maybe you can get there some way. I don't know. But you... Listen, you've got to go to Jesus. He is, he is God and He's the way to heaven. Now, when we talk about having access to God. This means, of course, prayer. But it means it means more than just praying. So, so Paul is trying to tell these people, is how then do I come to God's presence? And Paul says, well, you've got to understand that you're coming to Jesus in Him. You come through faith. Now, Jesus told us, He said to each and every one of us, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. And when you get to the Father, if you're going to come to the Father, you have to come through Me. You have to come by the Christ to the, to the Father. You have to come through Jesus because He is the way. You can't come to Christ by keeping the law. I haven't said this in a long time, but I need to emphasize it tonight. You can't get to God by being good, by doing good things. Man, we, we, 
bust ourselves if we thought we could get to heaven by being good. We try real hard. But listen, I don't care how hard you try, you can't do it. You have to come by grace. You're not going to get there through doing good. You can't deserve it. It has to be through Jesus, the door that into heaven. <clears throat> now, why is God so narrow? A lot of people are there wondering, why would God make it so hard to get to heaven? Folks, it's not hard. It's the easiest thing in the world to get to heaven. What about, they say, why would God make it? You have to come through Jesus. The Jews says, well, I don't want to come through Jesus. I don't believe He is the Messiah. We're looking for our Messiah. Why, would, why is it so hard to come to God? Why do you have to come through Jesus? Because here it is. Listen. Because Jesus is God. Are you with me? He is God. He's not, the, he's not just the Son. He is the incarnate God. He's the, the revelation of God in flesh because He is God who died for us on the cross. Right. Died for us. Amen. So in other words, God decided to become a man and die on a cross for your sins and for mine. <clears throat> if you decide in your heart that you want to come and be a part of a God, give your life to a God like that that loves you and would come and die for you. Uh, you can, you, you can. Hit the door is open. You can come into His presence if you choose to. You have to go through Jesus, but you can come to Him. The door is open. <clears throat> now Paul says that is, as he's talking to this church about about uh, worship and about evangelism and those things, discipleship. He says you can come into the presence of God with freedom and confidence. Freedom. We have the freedom to come to God through Christ. Nobody can stop you. You don't have to call up and, and make an arrangement with me to come and meet you at the stockyards so that you can pray to God. You know, you don't have to do that. Right? You can just go right to God anywhere you want to, uh, anytime. Come right. To, you have confidence knowing that when He forgives our sin and that He listens for us, He cares about us. <clears throat> I believe that a church that does not teach and practice grace is not a church at all. You've got to teach your people that discipleship is all about them learning God's Word. It's about them praying. It's about them growing in the Lord. You don't have to have somebody help you do that. Uh, remember the church is. It's you and me. We're the church. Now, there's another thing the church does. And I think this church is probably as good at this next one as anything else we do. And that is taking care of each other. You care for each other. And I hear you all the time. Where's so and so? I haven't seen him in church in the last Sunday or two. I hear that all the time. I haven't seen him the first time. Is he sick? What's going on? You you take interest in each other and you care about each other. Many of you visit back and forth, visit hospitals. Many of you call and care about people, and I want to compliment you. That's a part of the church. We need more. We need to be the church that's known for the way we care for each other. In Ephesians three thirteen, it says, "I ask you therefore." not to be discouraged because of my suffering for you, which are your glory. Now, old Paul, he was suffering. He was suffering in prison. And the people of the church prayed for him, cared for him. Timothy and others would bring him things that he needed, that people were caring for him. And we get the idea from this that the church is important. It's important that we take care of each other. It's one of the greatest things a church does. When we suffer, somebody knows, somebody cares. When we don't do that, we fail to be a church. You've heard this. You've heard me say it a million times. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So make sure you we're a, a caring church. <clears throat> Paul in, in Acts chapter twenty-two, the apostle Paul was arrested and in prison, and he was making his defense to the to the jailers and to the uh, the legal system the legal system there in Rome. <clears throat> and he began to tell them uh, about Christ and about God coming and saving the world. And then when he used a certain word, a riot broke out. And that word was Gentiles. He said, and God has come to save the Gentile as well as the Jew. See, folks, it's for everybody. That, that If Paul had not been in prison, if he had not been suffering, we might not have had this wonderful book of Ephesians to study and to read. So let's take our love for God. Let's take it out of this building and into our community and show people we love Jesus and we love them. Let's, let's take this summer and make it a special summer to tell people about Jesus. Now I'm going to close with 
this thought. Because we have to promote the love of God by worshiping Him. The worship at the Cowboy Church is as free and as uh, uninhibited as, as any place I've ever been. It's not that we're uh, extroverted, we don't dance around and, you know, and do all... Well, you could if you wanted to, nobody would stop you, but that uh, we you know normally we just sing our but the, the expressions on your faces, the look of joy in your heart as you're singing power in the blood and and uh, I shall not be moved as you sing those old standards of the church, I love to see your faces when you sing it because you are you're not singing to each other, you're singing to the Lord. You're celebrating in your heart what's going on. Paul said here in verse 17, And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses all, all understanding, all language, all knowledge. <clears throat> worship. You see, this, this is worship language. It sounds like a hymn. He says God's love is wide enough. It's long enough to last from now until the end of time. It's high enough to cover everything. And it's deep enough that the world is never going to see around. I want to read you one closing verse and I'm going to finish this evening as I talk about how much we love the Lord and how we need to worship Him. And that is this. Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sakes we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, nothing can separate you from that love. And when we worship here, we celebrate that. We remember God, you and I, we are one. We're family. And we're going to share it together forever. And we worship You. We celebrate that very union. Thank You, Lord. We have a special mission. But we're a church. But we have that mission. And that mission is to take Christ to the rural, to the rural-hearted person. Uh, if you live in downtown Springfield, if country's in your heart, and you're, you know, this is the church that God put here to reach you and to, tell, to preach, preach the Gospel to you. Now, stay committed to our mission. Don't let us drift from it. Let's stay faithful to what God put us here to do. I took a little break from Nehemiah because I was reading through Nehemiah. Uh, we, those of you who are here for the first time, we've been studying through Nehemiah. And, but all the, about all the preaching material was in the beginning, and it was just on details of how he did it. So we, we're going to move on to another subject because I thought you'd be bored to death on how to build a room and a building and how to do all this other stuff. So I wanted to move on. And so this, this thought hit me. I need to talk about who we are, why we're here, and, and the answer to the question that, I, that I'm asked often is, are you a real church? And yes, we are a real church because we do the things a church does. More than anything else, because Jesus is the middle of it, in the center of it, and we worship Him and love Him and tell everybody about it. Let's pray together.
Howdy, y'all. Howdy. <coughs> well, you got it too. Yes, uh, I got Denny's frog. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tom Cassie's out of the hospital. He's in rehab. Uh, if you be able to take visitors, if anybody wants to stop by, he's on Sunset and Campbell on the Maples uh, Rehab Center, uh, room 321. Uh, Walt Crumholt is uh, wanting to have some visitors. He's out on 3535 West uh, East. East Cherokee at that rehabilitation center. If you get a chance, stop by and see him. There are a couple of faithful people that come here to Cowboy Church. Got a auction concert uh, chili supper benefit. August the 29th, uh, it's for, it's here at the Livestock Auction, uh, it's for Jack DeWitt, passed away, uh, a long battle with brain cancer, they're having a benefit dinner for uh, honor him and to try to help out the family. Uh, if you have anything you want to donate, they would be glad to auction it off and they're going to have a Farm family uh, will be playing music and chili supper, uh, like I said, and then the auction follows all that. Next one is August the 9th, uh, uh, 11 to 7. Uh, we are holding our second annual praise to be Cooper event and the Willard, Willard Food Pantry and Willard Care to learn through fun and entertainment. Up there, they're having a benefit. They need volunteers to help out with that. They'll have music and uh, all kinds of stuff. If you can help volunteer for that, I'll set the deal right over here. Feel free to get the number to call and take care of all that. As you know, we don't <coughs> give an invitation here. If you made any decisions or want to make any, see uh, Herschel Jordan over here or any of the ranch hands, be glad to help you out with that. Uh, don't forget to sign up for our baptism. It's September. Uh, we'll be uh, gathering and probably have music and food and uh, baptize a bunch of people in the creek the old time way and, and uh, go from there. Have free cowboy Bibles over here, free for the taking. Have our building fund, our uh, general fund, helps pay the pastor, take care of the problems that we need with the church. We are in the proceed of building a building out on our property. Uh, I think the Architect has the plans, or he's supposed to be drawing up the plans. As soon as uh, Denny gets back, that'll get back on schedule, uh, as far as I know. Uh, have I forgotten anything? I had a lot of stuff to try to remember, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Wait a minute. Lunch Sunday? Lunch Sunday? Oh, yeah. yes. They are. As far as I know, I haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> Probably noon. 1230. 1230. Is that that's out of the property at yeah. the pavilion, yeah. 1230 to 3. Get there earlier. Come late. You know, if you come late, probably miss out. Too late, you won't eat. That's right. That's right. But you didn't get to join the fellowship. Or be, get there in time for nap time. The stick horse rodeo. The stick horse rodeo. Roger look good right there. Yeah. Stick horse rodeo. Yeah. Yeah, bring, my own bring your own. Bring your own stick. Uh, oh, pray for Tatum, uh, Billy's uh, niece, granddaughter, on on his daughter's side. Uh, his daughter. Daughter. Uh, anyway, his granddaughter is That's yes, very complicated. <laughs> well, give me too much information. I'm just I'm out there. Anyway, pray for Tatum that uh, she's going to go up and see a specialist on some problems that she's having. Okay, uh, let's go Lord of Prayer. Dear Lord, thank you again for your blessings. Continue to bless us in the Cowboy Church. Be with us and guide us. Be with our soldiers that are defending our freedoms that we can meet here and, and worship in freedom. Be with our government as they need to make the right decisions to continue uh, on with our 
freedom of speech and freedom of worship services and be with Brother Scotty and all his family and bless him as he brings the word and we hear and let us open our hearts that we may receive your word and open your hearts to let Jesus come in and take care of us and, and be saved so we can all get to heaven and, and be with us and let us tell other people about Jesus and don't let him keep them to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.